everybody. <laughs> Tammy just telling me about a dream that she a had. Weird dream. And I want to know whether anybody wants to interpret dreams because <laughs> it's pretty weird. Okay, well, here's a good one for you, Tammy. You can like this one right here. So we'll start you off with Shankopotamus. I love your handle there. Very cool. Potamus? Shankopotamus. 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 Shankopotamus says, yeah. I assume you guys don't use your kitchen that much. I guess you prefer to do these videos on the way to dinner when you look nice, etc., as opposed to after dinner when you're bloated and <laughs> grease stains so on your chest uh, and sauce, on your, and sauce on your chin. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I mean, the reason we do these, we're busy people, but when we're driving, we like to, uh, what do you call well, that? The we thing do? is, is when we're at home, James is on the phone 24-7. So, uh, well, we multitask. We multitask. Whatever. And it's an opportunity to see. We both get to answer these questions. So, uh, anyway, well, we've only got a short one today because we're, we've got an appointment we've got to get to. But here's an interesting one I'm going to talk about. So, we're just uh, um, giving advice to a vet here today. So, uh, this is a vet that we've known for quite some time. She's a really good vet, local around here. Um, and she bred to our Denali, our Fluffy, and she's got a nice litter of puppies coming. But. She yesterday was at day six from potential um, whelp day, C-section day, and her girl passed something. Uh, she said it was kind of a mass, and it kind of was a little bit greenish tinged. Uh, but you know, it, it, if it was a fetus, it wasn't a fully formed fetus. But it was something, and uh, you know, she knows what she's talking about. So it just presumably wasn't mucus plug or anything like that. So what the heck's going on and what do you do? And that was this conversation. And I actually just got off the phone with her today after we had a conversation last night about what we thought was the right way to, to handle this. And this is something that you guys run into occasionally, so that's why I'm gonna talk about this. So here's the problem. If you, I mean, Frenchies are notorious for if you C-section early, you really end up with a huge problem. What do you think, Tammy? Two days early is too much, isn't it? Oh yeah, two and three days. And we've been there. Two days you're sweating it out. Yeah, two days and, sweating it out. Yeah, third so, day, golly, you're like, this isn't good. So, so two days you're sweating it, right. but you're worried. So, you, you know, know you we, want healthy babies. You want full term babies. You want full term babies. Yeah. So, you know, the part of the problem is that we're used to humans who may have premature babies that might be three months early. And with neonatal care these days, those, pu those the puppies, those babies, uh, you know, well, although they're very small, uh, they can still survive and they're in an oxygen chamber and right. a lot of critical care and all those kind of things. I'm gonna interrupt you for a second because when you're when you're thinking two and three days early, you could be even five days early right. because of the breeding times that you had, like first breeding due date, second breeding due date. So you decide right. every other day. So if you're afraid it's three days early, it could be five days early. And then you're really in trouble. That's a panic because lungs yeah. aren't developed, folks. Yeah. They're they're still growing. Right. In so there. So we get into this mindset, oh look, with humans, you know, you could be three months early, surely a few days is not that big a problem with a Frenchie or, or other well, bulldogs. The answer is- their lungs are still developing. Yeah, the, the answer yeah. is, it absolutely is a huge problem. And what's going on here is puppies that are born early, although it's just a couple of days and they physically size-wise they're okay, you find them being born with slick faces. They have like bulging eyes, they look like birds almost, don't they? And you can tell right away you got a problem because you've got the slick face puppies coming out. And uh, what the problem is, is that there's a surfactant that they generate and that is a chemical that lets them transition from being in the mum's womb with amniotic fluid in their lungs because they're being fed through an umbilical cord. Their blood supply is a mum's blood supply. They're not breathing any oxygen. They're in a sac full of fluid. They're born and they have to do this transition within a few minutes, literally, of getting the fluid out of their lungs, taking the first breath and breathing. So what happens with these puppies when they're born prematurely is they actually do go through that transition for the most part. Now you might lose a puppy, but you might not lose the whole litter. The problem, it, it, it comes in the next couple of days. And typically about day two, where all of a sudden you've got puppies that are just having failure to thrive, they don't breathe properly. They need oxygen, and if you don't have oxygen, you just lose them. And with oxygen, it's still a fight. So that's the fear. That's what this vet is going through. She knows. So what she's worried about is this. Is she gonna go into early labor because there's something's gone wrong with a puppy inside her? So the kind of situation you get into is, is that a dog's progesterone level 
has dropped, it goes into labor and you get puppies early. So how do you stop this from happening? The answer is, is that you can give, um, I think it's called Reglin. It, it's a basically um, a progesterone product that keeps the progesterone levels high and stops the dog from going into labor. And so you can stave the whole thing off. I need to know which turn off. Yes, so, so that's, what, uh, that's what she is in the process of thinking about. And so, We've been, so what we decided between her and me uh, is, uh, let's look here real quick about for Tammy, um, was uh, that we should uh, take a progesterone level, she did, a progesterone level was six on day, on six days out, which is borderline, you know, you don't, you want to be a bit higher than that. Um, and, um, take this next exit, no, hold on. Not wrong. Take, take the exit, yeah, wrong. a little bit, hold on. Uh, three miles. I'll tell it to you when it comes up. You're okay. uh, anyway, so so she took a progesterone level. Progesterone level was six. So what she's going to do is she's going to give a small amount of progesterone, and then take a progesterone again tomorrow. And she's luckily enough that she's got both a, a fetal heart monitor and a um, ultrasound, so she can look at the whether the puppies are. Getting. So one of the problems here is if you give too much of this, you could stop um, the signs of whelp and go too long. And if you go too long, puppies can get in trouble as well. They get stressed. So she's got the luxury to be able to monitor the dog's heartbeat and make sure that they're not getting in trouble so she can then take puppies at the right time if she doesn't start to go into, doesn't show the signs of labor. She doesn't let it go too long. So there we go, that was, that was the conversation. I thought it was kind of interesting. But so some of you have had litters where you've gone and had an ultrasound done and everything looks fine, day 30 maybe got puppies on board, then you come back sometime later, maybe day 45, 50, maybe have an x-ray done, no puppies. What the hell's going on? And the answer is, in those situations, it's quite likely the progesterone levels have not been kept low enough and the mum has absorbed those puppies. If, it, if you lose progesterone levels at the very back end of the whole pregnancy, you can take this next exit, the very back end of the whole pregnancy, that's when uh, you can get into uh, um, uh, problems So anyway, there we go. That's uh, that's the whole conversation, and I uh, hope you enjoyed that one. So, yeah, so we're in Portland, yeah. Yep. Okay. See you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here: I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here, and certainly this should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye. Mm -hmm.